In the first part of our lecture series, we focused on defining CSR and the factors influencing it. Now it's time we take a look at how we can approach, develop, and implement social responsibility initiatives. As we begin this discussion of the theories influencing CSR, it's worth asking the question, why should we care about theory anyhow? This is a question I'm often asked by students and practitioners, so that's where we'll start, and then I'll offer an overview to CSR theory in general. A theory presents a systematic way of understanding events, behaviors, and situations. The notion of generality or broad application is important, so theories by their very nature are abstract, but not content or topic specific. So theories will vary in the extent to which they have been conceptually developed and empirically tested. However, their testability is an important feature of a theory. So theories and models help to explain behavior as well as suggest how to develop more effective ways to influence and change behavior. So for students and practitioners, I make this argument about theory. We know in corporate communications that any campaign or new strategy we implement, if it's successful, will have about a 3 to 5% impact on average. This means for the populations we're targeting, we will fail in meeting our objective about 95 to 97% of the time with our target audience. So I put this to you. If we can better understand the factors that influence people's attitudes and behaviors, we can better predict their reactions to our campaigns. This means we can improve the success rates for all of our campaigns. In short, it's in our own best interests for improving the return on investment to use theory to guide our strategy. Why? Because good theory represents verifiable and predictable ways that people react and behave in certain circumstances. So if we understand theory, we can be better practitioners. There are two broad types of theory, explanatory theory and change theory. These may have different emphases, but they are complementary. For example, understanding why an employee smokes is one step towards a successful cessation effort, but even the best explanations won't be enough by themselves to fully guide change to improve health, so some type of change model will be needed. Both explanatory theories and change theories are rooted in understanding the social determinants of behavior. Many social, cultural, and economic factors contribute to the development, maintenance, and change of behavior patterns. So the challenge with theory is that there are a lot of them that we could relate to any particular set of objectives that we're trying to create in practice. So how do we pick the right theory? Well, first, understand that there are likely to be multiple effective theories that we can use. If you're aware of the theoretical options that influence your fields of practice, Use a purposeful process to select a theory. If you're strategic about it, then you'll pick a theory that makes sense for the problem that you're trying to solve. I like the emphasis on a strategic and aligned process to theory selection because in CSR, in particular, there are more than 25 theories specific to CSR and loads more that could be used depending on the particular organizational context that we're talking about. But it's helpful to start with some academic efforts to classify CSR theories. There are three articles that I've found that are really helpful in this respect. So let's go through each of these classification approaches because odds are you'll find one that's most helpful for your work. We'll begin with Kolonovsky's classification of CSR theories. His approach focuses on three categorizations of CSR theory. First, he characterizes fundamental theories as those that include all theories that claim that corporations are only legal artifacts and the only social responsibility of business is creating profits in compliance with the laws. Second, he looks at moral personhood theories that focus on corporations as moral actors and their moral agency. Thus, corporations can be held morally accountable for their actions, and CSR is fundamental then to their actions. Finally, the social dimension theories are grounded by political and ethical theories connecting the corporation to larger societies. Second, Windsor argues that CSR was still quite contestable and focuses on theories that emphasize different dimensions. For him, there are three 
perspectives that focus on factors underlying social responsibility. First are theories that focus on ethical responsibility, highlighting strong organizational self-restraint, and emphasize theories that focus on altruistic duties and expansive public po policy in order to strengthen stakeholder rights. Second, economic responsibility theories advocates that market wealth creation is subject to minimalist public policy and perhaps really customary business ethics. Third, are citizenship theories whose language invokes a political metaphor, which is often problematic for positioning the theoretical synthesis of those included. Finally, Gariga and Mele offer an approach that defines social responsibility in really the most cohesive way that I've found. We'll use this perspective because instead of focusing on some awkward or even limited classifications like the others, these four groupings emphasize four different aspects of social realities that organizations face. In short, I think these highlight some of the critically different aspects of social responsibility, making this categorization really useful for people who are trying to match theoretical perspectives and their organizational realities. So it's important to note that each of these four perspectives are variations on the theme. So once you perspective once you select a perspective, it's important to select a particular theory within that perspective. You can't just articulate an overall perspective that corporate social performance is your theory. It's not. There are particular theories within each of these. And in the next four lectures, we will highlight what each of those theoretical categories actually means.